Those of you who are taking thesis seminar wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between uh, thesis statement and the, the topic sentence. We're going to be talking about claims and premises, and I think this is a good time as you're developing your literature review, you're thinking about the organization, being able to distinguish between these two types of claims. Before we do that, if you go into Thesis Seminar into Google Classroom, I changed how or where you can access the Writer's Doc. Remember, this is where you can access your Google Docs for the, um, for the semester. So I moved it out so that you can access it under week one a little bit easier before it was kind of embedded and hidden within Weekly Journal. Now you should be able to see it on your phone, on your cell phone. You should be able to access Writer's Doc and open up the folder directly. Remember that in your or on your phone, make sure that you install the three apps, Google Classroom, Google Drive, and Google Docs. Google Docs will allow you to make edits so that you can do some of the work, if not all of the work, at least some of the work from your cell phone. Especially for the weekly journals, I think uh, it will be more convenient for you being able to actually do your reflection from your phone. You can choose whether or not uh, that's going to be uh, recommended for actually writing five to 6,000 words. I'll leave that up to you, but at least you can access uh, these documents and go in and out of these apps uh, I think uh, fairly easily if you uh, install the three apps on your mobile device. If you don't install Google Docs, obviously you won't be able to edit the documents. You'll be able to access them, you'll be able to view them, but you won't be able to actually make changes to those documents. Again, if you do have any questions or issues about technology uh, getting started, please let me know. Come by my office, we can, uh, we can address your concerns. So we're in week two and if you haven't already, go into Lecture 2. Please take a look at the newsletter. Take a look at the two videos that I have so far. Uh, this will be a third video, in fact, that I'll include below uh, the two that are shown here. But I want to um, address the, uh, the differences between the topic sentence and thesis seminar. Before I forget, one more thing. Uh, the under-recorded tutoring sessions, this is where you can find all of the recordings that, uh, that I make, that I have, each of our discussions can be found here. It's organized by week, and you can access this again under week two. Week two, where it says recorded tutoring sessions. Okay, so let's go to our first point here. And a thesis statement. So your thesis statement is going to be at the end of your introduction. Don't worry about your introduction at this point. Uh, we're going to be creating a one paragraph, 200 to 250 word introduction, but that we're going to wait and do that at the end. In fact, at the very end, after you've already completed the method section and results and discussion section. But for now, you can develop a thesis statement. You should develop a thesis statement and go ahead and put that at the beginning of your literature review. So looking at the uh, the handout, we'll go back to Google Classroom, we can access under Writer's Doc, you can access your, uh, your document. If you haven't already, choose one of these thesis statements and add your name to it, change the name of the file so that, uh, th so that you have your own document. But here, this is the section for the literature review, and you're going to want to include your thesis statement just before the first heading. All right, so here the first heading begins here, kind of select it. So before the first heading, you'll include the thesis statement. The thesis statement is going to be the main idea of your entire essay, not only your literature review, but also your own research. So when you look at your thesis statement, think of it as a claim. A claim is something that is debatable, that's arguable. Think of it as a debate, so there, there'll invariably be different positions. So a claim in your thesis statement is an example of a general claim for your entire uh, paper. A claim is something that can be argued. There's going to be two sides, and you're going to choose a side. Now, when I say you're going to choose a side, remember when you develop an argument uh, or, uh, or an argumentative essay, you need to present both sides of the argument. You're going to be for one over the other, 
but you need to present both. In order to present a good argument, you need a counter argument and you need a rebuttal. So remember when you developed your argumentative essay in Redacción, in composition class, you were asked to create an argumentative essay where you had those three claims, an initial claim, counterclaim, and a rebuttal. So this is no different, it's just a little bit on, it's more on a, on a grander scale because you're now going to write 2,500 words approximately that is going to basically be a, a large argumentative essay. So think about the thesis statement and you might take a look at this page. There's a lot of pages you can look at to get some ideas, but think about what is the, um, basically what is the claim, the central claim that you want to uh, express. And we can look at claims. There are several different types of claims here that you can consider. And I'm going to show you four examples here and argue for probably the last three as being good options for our, for our purposes. So the first type of claim is a claim of fact or definition. And I think for our purposes, this will be the one that will be probably avoided um, in most cases, especially for the thesis statement. Uh, the second here is a claims about cause and effect. This may be an option. Okay, so what uh, in your uh, thesis statement, you might express some sort of cause and effect. Number three is probably going to be um, one of the most common types of claims uh, about a solution or policy. Okay, so maybe you have... Uh, you're going to argue for a particular technique, a teaching technique, or maybe you're going to argue for certain types of communicative uh, strategies. Maybe you're going to argue for a specific type of technology or a way in which vocabulary can be introduced into the classroom for promoting speaking skills. Maybe it's this idea of using videos outside of the classroom to, to promote a flipped learning environment. So think of what you're arguing for. Remember that it is based on a problem, so you do need to have your thesis rooted in a problem. But don't think of your entire thesis uh, or your literature review as talking about the problem. In fact, the only time you're going to need to talk about your problem, generally speaking, is going to be in the introduction. We're going to have maybe three to four sentences to say about it. We're going to have some references to have the, uh, some backing uh, from the literature to support our problem. But the rest of your literature review is going to be addressing something that you're for. And what are you for? What are you arguing um, uh, for in terms of a particular technique or strategy or technology or interactional pattern, etc.? The fourth type of claim here is about value. Okay, so you might want to take a look at these different types because. The, although the thesis statement is a type of claim, and for, mo for most of our purposes it will be a claim about a solution, that doesn't mean that other claims that are going to be throughout your literature review can be different uh, of these different types. So that leads me into your topic sentence. Remember that each body paragraph should begin with a topic sentence. Think about the meal plan. The first a uh, letter in the acronym MEAL, M, stands for main idea or the topic sentence. So the first sentence of each of your body paragraphs will not be a citation. It's actually going to be your own idea. It's going to be your own claim that represents the one point, the main point of that one paragraph. Remember that a paragraph is there to discuss one point. Try not to put too much information into one point. But at the same time, make sure that you have enough supporting sentences to talk about the what, the how, the why, the when, the where, with, the with whom, about the main point or the claim that is reflected in the topic sentence. So when you're thinking about your topic sentences, and I'll, let me go back to our template. My recommendation getting started is to go ahead and fill out your headings. And then when you start thinking about your topic sentences for each of your body paragraphs, create a claim, create a complete sentence that you can add to 
each of your sections. So think of it as a sentence outline, basically. This will help me if you're at a point where you have finished all of the topic sentences within each of your sections. It's a good idea that we have a conversation that we can talk about your organization before you dive into the rest of your thesis statement. I think this is the better way to go so that you don't develop the entire idea and maybe the organization is not what it needs to be. Maybe it's, it's good the way it is, but I would like to have that conversation with you before you begin, whether that's during your tutoring session or we schedule something uh, uh, in addition to your uh, scheduled tutoring session or maybe you shoot me an email. I take a quick look at it, leave you some comments in your Google uh, Doc, and then you're off to the races. All right, so remember that the claims... Now, for your topic sentences, are going to be more specific, of course, but they should align with each of your sections. Remember that you should have two to four sections given uh, the, a literature review of this length. I think that's a reasonable amount of level two headings that you should consider. Remember, level two headings are the ones I've highlighted here. This is, this is one uh, level two heading. Here's another level two heading that I'm selecting here. So again, two to four main sections or level two headings, and uh, then you can create a sentence outline or topic sentences that are gonna be included in each of these respective headings or sections. All right, so we've talked about claims, and we've talked about a thesis statement. The last thing you might want to look at, this is a fairly good page here that talks about forming an argument and this idea of premises. Premises are simply a type of claim that links to some conclusion. So a conclusion is a claim, a premise is a claim. The way in which you organize your ideas in your claims, this relates to a premise. So for instance, you might have a premise uh, from a uh, topic sentence that leads into the next paragraph that begins with a topic sentence and maybe the last paragraph in your discussion, in your analysis sentences, you make some final conclusion taking into consideration the prior claims. Those prior claims or premises can come from the same paragraph and or they can come from prior paragraphs. It's kind of a link between all of these different claims coming together and then forming some conclusion. Again, this can be at the paragraph level, it can be at the section level. Of course, it's coming uh, from a more broader standpoint, it's coming from the whole lit review. All right, so think of premises as a type of claim leading to some sort of conclusion. And remember that topic sentences are more specific claims. Thesis statement is your general claim and remember that in your, uh, as you form an argument and you're looking at your initial claim, your counterclaim, and your rebuttal, that, you are, um, that you're looking at these claims and making some sort of uh, logical flow of ideas to support your, your overall argument. This tum uh, the Tumlin logic is something that you're already familiar with, although we don't use these particular uh, we don't use this vocabulary specifically, but it's basically a uh, claim is going to be a topic sentence. Grounds are going to be your evidence. So when you develop your body paragraphs and you're bringing in evidence from outside sources, remember all of your evidence should come from an outside source in your literature review, and you should have citations. So those are, that's going to be your grounds. And warrant here, a warrant is how it connects how it connects uh, to how the evidence connects or the grounds connects to the main idea or the claim. Think of that as your analysis sentences, how basically what's the relationship, how you, can you explain and comment, compare and contrast, analyze the evidence or in terms of the main idea. What's the connection between the two? Now they go on to talk about backing and rebuttal and qualifier, but uh, I think the main idea are these first three, the claim, grounds, and warrant. Okay, if you can try to remember that. Again, think of the meal plan. We'll be talking more in terms of the meal plan, um, but I did want to share with you this, uh, this information that might provide 
additional perspective as you begin organizing your ideas around your thesis statement. So for this week, again, try to uh, continue reading. Go ahead and upload your thesis statement, your research questions. You can include your research questions at the end of your literature review. Go ahead and fill out the topics first, then go with the topic uh, sentences. So create kind of a, a, uh, an outline. When you're ready for me to look at it, let me know whether it's during our tutoring session or during the, um, or send me an email and I'll look at it. And then we'll go from there. Once, you, once, we have, once we're okay with the organization, then you can go and continue developing each of the body paragraphs uh, as you wish. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Either send me an email or we can talk about it in our tutoring session.